How's it going, ladies and bruises? I'm Bobby Six Killing. Welcome back to Cyberpunk. But ending action, it's time to exit our uh, break, finish our break, and get back to work. I suppose we got a lot to do, and we got a party to plan and also attend, and a sister of a dead ex-lover to deal with, <laughs> which is going to be fun. I wonder if I left food for four. Eh? Four. I'm sure he's fine. Okay, I'm here. Um, Dorothy? You won't get through the bar anytime soon. You can stop walking. Oh, honey. You want something? The usual, I guess. The usual. Us usual. Usual. The usual. What's the usual? <laughs> Jeez, I've just said it. It's been a month since I last recorded. What's the usual? Like a Brantini or something like that? No, the Brantini's Alma's usual, right? What's her usual? Maybe a fringe weaver? Let's try a fringe weaver. I don't remember. That's the problem with taking a, like a fucking month hiatus from the game. Here you go. Ah, this is bad. Bad, but why? Hmm. Okay, you're freaking me out. What's up with you? Hey, honey. How do you know what's real? How so? I mean, how do you know if what you see is an actual thing? You can't. How can you tell if what you see around you is actually happening? What tells you everything is not actually a fabrication? Nothing! <laughs> what tells me I'm not just a simulation in a computer? And those ponderings brought you to the bar? I mean, where else to drown those sorrows? What? Oh, I'm in the bar? Am I? Dorothy? So you're having a sol solipsistic crisis of sorts. Solip what? That's what I thought. Solipsism. The theory that the self is the only thing that can be known to exist. See, that's another thing right there. That word. Solipsism. What does it even mean? Where the hell did it come from? Well, solace means alone and ipsis, ipse means self. Yes, but how did it come to be? Do you expect me to believe that a lot of people just randomly decided to make noises? And decided, hey, let's make this noise mean this. That doesn't make sense. Words don't make sense. Jeez, stop it. You're right. I never thought about that, but you're right. Stop it. <laughs> I've been repeating words for a long time and they've stopped making sense. Why? Calm down, that's just semantic situation. Stop making up words, honey. <laughs> then there's this counter. How can I be sure the counter is really here where you try to walk through it? It is. Please stop tapping it. Hold on. Just making sure. I should make her a drink at the very least. I'll have something to throw at her. <laughs> Let's just make her a beer. I feel like a beer will be a nice calming drink for her. Okay, have a beer. Stop tapping the counter so much. I'm this close to throwing this at your face. Sorry. <sighs> Let's start from the beginning. Since when did you have this existential crisis? Since earlier today, I think. But I don't know, it was all too sudden. I was thinking about everything that happened from a week ago until now. How much fun I was having, how much I loved everyone around me. And out of nowhere the thoughts started piling up in my mind. What is love? What is fun? Are those feelings real? Is all of this real? Am I real? What tells me I'm actually in a body? What if I'm just some computer somewhere thinking that it has a body? What if I'm just a human girl in a comatose dream? What tells me that you're real? Huh? For all I know, I might just be a figment of someone's imagination. Or even just an AI simulation in some computer that thinks it's human. I've been there, Dorothy. That existential doubt and crisis, that uncertainty about whether or not things are real? It was a couple of months only, but... I remember having panic attacks and scratching my arm to feel something. But the panic attack gave me a rush of adrenaline, so I couldn't feel the scratch, and the fear got worse. What'd you do to get over it? Oddly enough, I read a book. The Last Rain in the World, one of my favourites. At one point I cried with, with the book, and I realised... I was crying over fake things, a story, and its characters. So it doesn't matter whether it's real or not, yeah. I didn't care less for them because they were fake. Why not think of reality like that too? Even if I'm a figment of someone's imagination, I'd still care about you. That's what I told myself, at least. 
It wasn't immediate, but their focus helped me. Huh. I like it. Hey, can I take this drink? I made it for you. Thanks. Okay then. <laughs> Woo. Why did you throw it on your head? To feel something. To feel something you made. And? It burns. And itches a bit. I'll get you a towel. Delivery for Dana Z- Oh, I've been here before. Mr. Mario, welcome back. I have a delivery for Dana Zane. Who's that? She's my boss. I'll get it for. I'll get it for her. Right, sign here, please. That's a big package. I wonder what's inside. You should open it. If it's something perishable, maybe it'll need to be refrigerated. Let's see. It's uh, a wiener. A really big wiener. Hey, honey. Oh no. Hmm. The big package had a big wiener inside. What would your boss do with such a thing? I don't know how she'll cook it. Perhaps she'll chop it? Honey. Seems the wiener is too big to eat correctly. Stop. <laughs> Maybe you can prepare some right now. What do you say, honey? Do you want some of your boss's wiener? I do. <laughs> Seriously, Jill. She's the one making the jokes. And the other one trying not to laugh too hard at them. Anyway, we all know that if we dare cook this without her permission, she'll hang us upside down. She'll hang me upside down. Hey, Jacket Boy, what's your name? I'm Mario. Come on, Mario. I'll buy you a drink. Hmm? You might have another delivery, you know. This is the last one, actually. I'll accept your offer. I'll have a sunshine cloud. And you? I'm fine. Isn't that weird, though, to buy a drink for someone and then not buy one for yourself? Feels weird. I feel like you need to buy one for yourself as well. On the rocks and blended. Tastes like old chocolate milk with its good smell intact. Bam. Here. Thanks. Hey, um... Call me Dorothy. You can also call me Darling for the right amount. Yeah, Dorothy. Why'd you buy me a drink? She does that. Just to let you know, I don't swing that way. What way, Lilum? I'm a man's man. I like men, okay? Not that there's anything wrong with liking women, but... Oh, don't worry, I wasn't hitting on you. I was thanking you. Thanking me? Your package let me see honey with here laughing like an idiot. That's easier than you think. That made me happy and, I don't know, it fit with what she was telling me earlier. I'm more calm than when I entered. Glad to help, I guess? Well, oh, Judy calls. Bye, Mario. Bye, John. Bye, honey. Enjoy your big wiener. <laughs> Out with you. <laughs> she seems like a nice girl. I don't know about nice, but she's she's great. Yep. <laughs> I don't mean for it to sound like a... I get it, I get it, don't worry. You like guys, it's clear. Speaking of, you like motorcycles, don't you? I do, yeah. Have you been to the motor district? I spend all of my free time in the motor district, actually. Why? Is it true that what they say about all the illegal races going on there? You're not a cop, eh? As far as I remember, no. Well, I mean, there are illegal races, but there's also a semi-legal league going on there. Semi-legal. The authorities acknowledge that there's races going on. They don't know what goes on in them, however. Modified engines, casualties, substance abuse. The illegal ones end up being safer in the end. Huh. Have you heard about a biker called Christine Love? Miss Love, of course, everyone knows who she is. What about her? Is her gang as dangerous as they say? I don't know, nobody knows. Excuse me? They look intimidating enough, but the truth is, nobody's faced them directly. Moreover, nobody wants to be the one that got beaten to a pulp if they turn out to be what they seem. So her gang is just there, menacingly doing their own thing, not bothering anyone. Oh. Do you want anything else? I'll have a piano man. Alright. Piano man for Mario. Time for a piano man. One, two, three, five powder delta. Uh, we got five Flannery Guide and three Carmatrine, is it? One, two, three, on the rocks and mix. Not aged. I don't know how I keep hitting that. Yeah. Yeah, this is nice. This will sound weird, but do you believe in Ripplebots? Ripplebots? There's a belief that some Lilim out there are designed to perfectly replicate a particular human. That someone or something replicates those humans with such Lilim. Are we talking like the Fallout 4 thing? Replacing people with robots? 
Thus they call them Replobots. You know a lot about this. I don't, it's... It's in most magazines nowadays. Well, it's the first time I've heard of it. What about it? On my way here, I almost ran over my neighbour. He just showed up in the middle of the street. And I say almost because he moved really quickly out of the way. Then I went to deliver a package and somehow my neighbour was there, almost immediately after the whole thing. And he was there the whole time. Maybe it was someone that looked like him. He had the same looks, clothes and mannerisms. Trust me, you know a perfect replica when you see one. And you saw the kid Lilim here. They can easily pass off as humans. There are even Lilim idol singers nowadays whose voices can pass off as human. They can be passing off as humans under our very own noses, replacing us little by little. At this point in time, I really doubt it. Lilim behavior is a bit different. You can easily tell someone's a Lilim because they seem... How do I put this? They don't care about risk and danger as much as we do. They treat risk with a lot more leniency. Still, be careful. Keep an eye out for uncanny doppelgangers. Calm down, Captain fucking Tinfoil Hat Man. I'm leaving. Thanks for everything. Please come again. What's your take on the Ripplebot thing? Do you believe in them? Do you? Not really, but I asked you first. When I was in high school, I had this irrational fear of aliens. I was paranoid that they would come. What would I do then? I remember I lost lots of sleep because of it. That doesn't answer my question. Let me finish. After many months of fear, I reached a conclusion that might as well apply here. It's useless to be afraid. I'm but a simple woman, I wouldn't be able to do shit against them. So I'd rather live without being afraid. Because the memories of not being afraid will be my only solace when the nebulae crabs invade. Ah, I mean, when the Ripplebots come. Jilly's still afraid of aliens. What part of it's useless to be afraid didn't you catch? Right. Back. Did anything happen? I discovered I have a sense of humour of an eight-year-old. <laughs> Did anything new happen? <laughs> hey! They brought you a package. Ah yes, my curated <laughs> curated wiener. <laughs> it's a gift from my folks. It was delayed in customs, but here it is. You guys want some of it? <laughs> That's a new one. <laughs> Curate my wiener. Looking pretty good, looking pretty good. I made a mistake? What did I do? Apparently I made a mistake. Oh well. Do wonders if Maneki Nekos actually bring luck. Buy one to prevent her from getting too distracted. We need 10 grand, eh? Jeez, we're so poor. How are we gonna get 10 grand for bills? Especially if we keep buying things. God damn. Alright, what do we got here on the augmented eye? Y2K, the final remaster leads the video game charts. Really? The newest remaster of 2016's Y2K, a postmodern RPG, opens the charts this week with 3.5 million copies launched on, shipped on launch day. Man, that's a lot of disappointed people. <laughs> Fuck, that was mean. Yeah, that game's not very good though, that's the problem. Alright, anyway, next. Woman marries anime pillow, nobody is actually surprised. I remember a time when wacky stuff like this made a lot of headlines, but even though I'm reporting on it, I can't help but think how mundane it's become. I mean, we live in a world where you can just plug into the internet and live there as long as your wallet can afford the related fees. Lots of people get married in these virtual spaces thanks to new technologies. The traditional views on human relationships have changed so much that somebody marrying a literal object feels kind of tame now. If the pillow had some sort of intelligence, it might be somewhat different, but it's just a plain generic anime hug pillow. Keep the times, Grandma. First Space Colony plans to develop its own army. Even though space was imagined as a promised land, a place where humanity would start over, it looks as though we're about to repeat our mistakes from the past. How surprising. The first space colony, Shin Out of Paradise, is currently in talks to develop its own privately owned army, following alleged threats from a notorious terrorist group. We're discussing it right now, but the law is most likely approved. We'll have an army and we'll defend our motherland from any terrorist threat. Alice Rabbit chimed in during the private stream, this terrorist group does not exist. Don't let out of paradise government fool you. The only reason for this law is so that they can have control over the population. Yeah, that sounds like something a government would do. Alright, let's save and then let's get back to work. 28th of December. Evening. Ah, Jill. I'm out to get firecrackers. Firecrackers? It's New Year's, right? We need some. Would firecrackers scare off the di- Yeah, good idea. Go ahead. I'll be back in a bit. 
Even for a cat lover, you sure get excited about firecrackers a whole lot more when dogs are involved. I know how, how hypocritical it sounds, and I don't care. Ah, Jamie's here. Greetings. Anyway, let's start. Time to mix drinks and change lives. I'm just sticking with the... I quite like the soundtrack we've got now. Ah, the guy that wouldn't come back twice. Yeah, yeah, shut up. By any chance did something fly over here two weeks ago? On Friday? Yes. There were lots of weird explosion noises throughout the night. But as far as I understand, those were made by a flying drone or something like that. So it flew by here. I take it you know what made those made the noise. Let's just keep it at whatever drone story you heard. Right. The noise got annoying after a while, I must say. So it remained in the vicinity. I don't know what counts as in the vicinity, but yeah. Distant explosions all night. Interesting, so it didn't get far away. Hmm. Um, now get me a Mars Blast. Rude. Very rude. Six Bronson Extract. Uh, one Powder Delta. Four Flanner Guide. Two Carmatrine and Blended. Blend that shit. Let's do it. There you go. Well, you didn't mess up. Sorry, if I may interject, you looking for a fight? <laughs> Most certainly not. You really think you'd stand a chance? You're like half his size, and he's a professional killer. I can fight dirty. He kills people for a living. I can fight dirty. <laughs> Jill, please, you make me sound like a savage. It'll be like me saying that you get people drunk for a living. It's not wrong, but there are better ways of saying stuff like that. You're right, sorry. And like I said, I'm not looking for a fight. I just noticed you seem to like strong drinks. What about it? Well, to be honest, it's a rare sight in this bar. I'd even come to believe that I'm the only one here who enjoys them aside from the owner. May I suggest you try a suplex next time? Might be to your liking. Hmm. Okay, let's try this suplex thing. Right. Let's give Ingram a suplex. Well, that sounded weird. <laughs> let's actually give him a suplex though, because he's a fuckwood. <laughs> One, two, three, four. Three flanner guide. Uh, three Carmatrine. What else have we got? On the rocks and mix. Bam. Here. Good stuff. Like a less burning but punchier pile driver. Say, your face looks somehow familiar, mister. Call me Jamie. And you are? I'm Ingram. Anyway, I think I saw your face somewhere. Maybe when I needed to look for a specific file at... Uh... Did you perhaps go through a nanomachine expunge? I did, actually. Figured as much. Only a handful of people do that. And almost all of them are people with nanomachine rejection that feel oddly suicidal. So why go through the whole thing? Rejection. Need to hide something? The second one. It's easy to remain undetected when they have no means to track you or your activity. I see. How does the expunge work? You lie in a pressure chamber and they give you a special IV solution. It causes nanomachine rejection while giving you the antibodies needed to prevent them from getting back in. For five hours, you're trapped in a bed while a horrible pressure builds up in your body and nanomachines are forced out. They're like little needles all over your body. You feel them in your eyes and your gums and your toes everywhere. And after all that, they need to implant you with a mechanism that constantly releases the same antibodies. Ouch. What are you having, Jamie? This is a gut punch. Yeah, I should have figured. Hey, give me one of those. I haven't made anything for Jamie. Where the fuck is he getting his drinks from? <laughs> he's making them himself. He's just jumping over the bar and making them. Aged and mixed. Yeah. Yeah, I love these. Looks different from yours, though. I had a couple of extras in his, actually. So where's the antibody unit they stuck you with, Jamie? Inside, like all the other maintenance systems. It can be troublesome at times, but the perks of not having nanomachines in the body outweighs the cons. And the rest of the enhancements? Were you reconstructed or have you been adding them over time? Over time, either by getting a much needed enhancement or through fixing injuries. I see. Well, it was a pleasure, Jamie, but I gotta leave. Nice to meet you, Ingram. Please come again. Don't count on it. <laughs> I'm sick, sick of hearing you say that. You said that twice. Shut up. <laughs> Seemed like a nice guy. Right. <laughs> I won't call him a bastard, but he's not the nicest in the bunch. Maybe you caught him on a bad day? Nah, I think you're just that good at bringing out the nicest side of people. Oddly enough. <laughs> that guy ties the hell out of me. 
someone's in a good mood. Give me a bad touch, will you? That will you be in a good mood too. Bad touch for Alma. For Armitage. Uh, two Bronson, two Powdered, two Flannel Guide, four Karma Train. On the rocks and mixed. There you go, Titty Hacker. Jill, you have such a pretty sense of humour. A petty sense of humour, sorry. Guilty as charged. So, what put you in a good mood? Oh yeah, that. Today, my sister was supposed to be in court for all the custody proceedings. Of course, not only does she show up later than her husband and drunk at that, but also, also dressed like she got fucked in the back of a parking lot. And to top it off, she forgot to even bring her kids. Luckily, my parents brought them to the court. The judge assigned the kids to my parents for the time being. So she really messed it up, huh? When they came back to the house and Diana started throwing a temper tantrum, she said it was lucky her husband didn't get the kids because the angst would make her jump onto the highway. So Ava comes and says, Then make sure it kills you, because we aren't dealing with you as a cripple. I shouldn't reinforce that behaviour, but... <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it was the timing, but... I've been laughing for an hour now. You hold quite the animosity for Dana, don't you? She and I used to be the closest friends when I was seven or eight. We played all the time. We even slept on the same bed for a while. Then she turned into a teen. We stopped playing. She had other things she wanted to do. I can forgive all of that. I mean, the age difference and all. But there's something in particular I still can't forgive. It was the day she invited her friends to the house, and I went to ask her something. As I was leaving, one of her friends asked if I was her sister, and she said she had no little sisters. Ouch. I think that was the moment that finally broke the pedestal I held her on. I admired her as much as a kid could admire someone, you know. Little by little, the admiration wore off until we finally reached that breaking point. I felt betrayed. And you haven't been able to forgive her after 40 years? Hey. It's not that I still hold a grudge against her, but rather... The Dana who said all those things so many years ago is the same Dana I know today. How so? She hasn't matured one bit. She's still as selfish, childish and immature as she was back then. When you see her, you don't see an adult, you see an overgrown, horny teen. So aside from destroying any admiration I held for her, she made sure not to fix that impression. Huh. But enough about me, how are you? Everything's fine aside from this note. A note? Remember how I told you I lashed out at a dead girl my dead girl dead ex's sister? Yeah. I got this note from her. Let's see. Wow, she must really feel bad about the whole thing. As do I. So what's the problem then? The same fear that drove me away from her in the first place. Right. Give me a brain teeny, will ya? There's a little story I want to tell you. Right. Six aldehyde. Man, this is such a strong drink. Three powdered delta, one carmatrine. Aged and mixed. Here. This is the thing. Let's start. Boo. Oh no. Oh hell no. This is the story of a girl who grew disillusioned with one of her sisters. Soon it became animosity, and not long after that she distanced herself completely from said sister. With time, the girl would become attached to her elder sister, looking up to her achievements. All I can look at right now is those boobs. Not now. Said sister would even marry the girl's best friend, not soon after. And after the girl went into college, said sister would quit her job. Her sister was worried sick about leaving her baby kid alone, prompting her to quit her high-ranking job. What if I hire your high-ranking lips? Shut up. The girl, even as an adult, felt betrayed. Her role model sister went against, went against everything she held in her in high esteem for. She was no longer a child, and yet she felt like part of her had crumbled. Hey, Joe. I can lift her sweater. Do you want to see? I bet you want to see. Alright, enough. Enough? Shit. Peace out. Uh, I mean... I know the girl is you and the sister is your elder sister. Please get to the point. Right. The point is, if you don't face her, she'll be heavily disappointed. She's trying to make amends with you. That must take courage. Lots of it. Yeah, you're right. My mouth's dry. Can I get a beer? Right. Man, you drank that really fast, didn't you? A beer. One aldehyde, two bronson, one powdered, two flanagide, four carmatrine. Mixed. Bam. Here. Yeah. Thanks. So, tell me, did you and this Gabby girl get along? Oh yeah. I never had brothers and sisters, but once Lenore introduced me to her as her sister-in-law, 
She got so excited about having a new sister that she clung to me a lot. I helped her in her studies, read books with her, played with her a lot. She was... she was pretty much my sister too. I have to leave, but I'll tell you this. As both a big and a little sister, if you don't grant that girl the chance of talking to you, I'll never forgive you. Yeah, yeah. Oh, there's a small New Year's party this Saturday if you're interested. Oh, sure, I'll be there. Remember, I won't forgive you. Yeah, yeah. I'll go take my break. Alright. Gah. You were there? You were quite absorbed in the conversation just now. Jamie even said goodbye to you. Didn't you hear? Anyway, call me if anything comes up. We're slowly losing our mind, and by slowly I mean rapidly. Alright, well, we'll wrap this one up here. And get back to it tomorrow. Until then, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out with me, and I'll see you in the next one.